Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Max Tech Motorsports. Um, today we're back with the 03 GTI, the Time Attack car, and um, today we're going to be starting the installation of our oil cooler for the track. So where I left off last time with you guys was, you can see the downpipe is in. Um, yeah, we're just waiting to get everything kind of going here with the oil, that way I can get the exhaust uh, fully done, but um, yeah, so let's take a look at what we got. This is our oil cooler. So this is just a universal oil cooler here. Um, I'm actually not sure of the actual brand. Um, I got it off used from another person of mine for the IROC uh, originally. But um, since we kind of got rid of that project, this is what we're dealing with. Um, yeah, anyways, it's got two, um, these are half inch MPT uh, fittings to a dash 10, uh, pretty standard. A lot of piped open there. Um, they were previously installed by the other owner, but honestly, as long as they cold the oil, that's all I care about. And then we have um, this is a spall fan. So um, I'm actually not sure how much uh, CFM this thing pulls, but honestly, as long as it works, that's all that matters. And then, in order to do this uh, oil cooler setup, I went out from um, uh, Michimoto, and there's the part number for you guys. So oil sandwich plate, M20, it's in silver. Um, yeah, we went online and ordered one of these. So there's the plate itself. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? It's got your your uh, fittings here for running my Dash 10 AN lines. And then it's got a 1 8 MPT fitting per side. Uh, one we're definitely gonna be installing an oil pressure gauge on. And the other, I'm not sure, I might keep it plugged. I might even do uh, an oil temp um, gauge on it, but we'll see. So, as you guys can see, it's pretty basic. Comes with um, the gasket for the one side, and then um, you know I mean, your gasket for your oil filter will go on the other side. So, also I went ahead and ordered the gain fittings for it. So, this is it right here. You got your M20 2 10. You see the o ring or um, the little washer here that's to help obviously seal. Um, the actual sandwich plate itself from leaking out where the lines go and then here we have our um, this is our, our adapter so this will allow me to actually mount the sandwich plate onto the block and then be able to mount my oil filter so, so this was all from Mishimoto which is a pretty decent brand a lot of people know that around but uh, yeah taking a look at the car so what we have done so far is you can see the front bumper has been taken off already. Um, yeah, pretty basic. Nothing too uh, too wild with it. Um, for the MK4 guys, um, there's tons, tons of tutorials on how to actually take off the front bumper. But pretty basically, you can kind of see you have these T30 um, kind of screws that go around. In order to get to these bottom ones, you got to take off that lower front grille. <laughs> There's one on that side also. And we have one up there, one there, 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 up there. And then we have our four uh, T20 screws that are in the, the fender here, the fender liner. Um, also, you gotta take your grill off. But then everything just pops off and then you have your foam piece here. Um, I'm gonna be removing this, um, but the foam piece is gonna be coming off just because uh, I went out and grabbed myself um, a universal uh, little intercooler, so it should fit something like that. And eventually when I do the AC delete, I'll be taking this whole uh, assembly off, but um, I'm going to try to wait until I get my aftermarket rad for that. But anyways, as far as the oil cooler goes, so where most people mount them would be in the front. Oh, somewhere like this. You know what I mean? Or even behind the plate here, but um, because I'm going to be putting the oil, uh, the intercooler in here, um, I'm going to, or I'm kind of strapped for space. So, um, kind of going based off the stock intercooler, which will be on for now, I'm actually going to mount this on the other side. So, if you guys take a look, um, you can kind of see. So there we go. 
So I've already gone ahead. Um, the only thing you have to do is you have to remove the horns. So pretty basic. There's like a there's two clips here. So you can see one right there, and then uh, this piece was there. I actually grinded it right off. And what we're probably gonna do on this setup is I'm probably gonna try to put the horn or horn somewhere in here. I might have to fab up my own little bracket or kind of um, clean up or modify the stock ones. But yeah, you know what I mean? They should stay out of the way. And then um, this obviously is your clearance light on the side, turn signal thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, so in order to get this thing kind of strapped up here, um, I went ahead kind of clean up the frame rail and then I went to in Canada you can go to like Canadian Tire, um, Lowe's, uh, TSC, all those kind of stores and they'll have some pretty basic steel um, plating. So yeah I usually buy big lengths of this for my derby cars mostly for doing like gas tank stuff like straps and whatever but um, for this project it actually worked out pretty good. So I just cut two pieces you can see them there, both of them there. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of tack weld that on. And then, uh, you know what I mean, make it sure it's nice and, and sturdy here on both sides. And then we're gonna drill uh, a 3 8 hole somewhere where my thumb is there. And then that will allow us to mount our oil cooler. So oil cooler will go up and sit like so. So a lot of people what they'll do is they'll run an oil cooler kind of sideways also in here like I showed on with the intercooler side but um, I mean that gets the most air. But at the, the same time, um, I mean this since I got it for such a good deal, um, I really don't want to go out and buy another kit. I know ECS tuning also has a really good kit that you can buy also but um, yeah, you know what I mean? Because I already had this, I kind of want to make it work. And then what I'm hoping to do is the lower front grill that's down at the bottom here. Um, I'm going to either remove it completely and put some mesh, or I'm just going to kind of take some of the stuff out to make more airflow. And it should flow directly into here, allowing um, the cooling fins on the side to feel the air. And then also um, with the power of the fan. I'm going to try to uh, wire it up so that it's uh, sucking um, all the heat out of it. So um, this is the wiring that came with it. Uh, I don't have any of these connectors kicking around. I can't find one right now. So I'm pretty much just going to snip that and um, yeah, wire up my own setup. And um, for that, pretty much we're going to uh, install a relay kit. And then I'll probably put my own switch inside uh, the car. Um, yeah, and then for the fittings, so I'm not going to be using these lines. I just, I literally got both these lines for like 30 bucks. I just wanted the fittings um, so I can use them. But these are like, I think this is like some cheap Amazon line. Not to mention that uh, um, they're too short for what I need. But yeah, anyway, so with um, the oil cooler sitting up here, I'll be able to kind of stick. Um, the 90 up top and then I'm gonna route these to go right through here so if you look it fits perfectly in there I'm gonna have to grind this little nub off to get the other one just because the wiring harness is here but um, yeah this plastic piece will come off and then going into the engine bay here this is our stock sandwich plate for the MK4 GTI. So I'm gonna take this piece off and then um, these coolant lines that run and swirl around uh, the actual oil here to keep it cool down. Um, I'm just going to take, I believe these are 5 eighths. I'm just gonna take them and uh, just bypass it. So I'll cut, pretty much cut, print a brand new piece of uh, line in and go from uh, this little guy here. And then it kind of goes in the back there. I can't really show you with the camera. But there's like a hard line back there that I'm gonna go to. So um, yeah, guys, let's uh, let's kind of get out of here. We'll see how this works. Um, the hard part right now is just trying to get time done 
um, or get this done in time just because we are losing daylight and it's hard for me to film. But um, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is just, I uh, just went out and bought some new welding tips. Fresh line of wire, um, just flux core. I, I don't have any gas hookups. Um, I'm not the best welder, but I can, I'm decent enough that I can at least weld this on to keep it, uh, keep it on the car. But um, yeah, so let's get going for the welding here and then uh, I'll bring you guys in when I'm done. So if you can see there, so there's our marks. So um, if you are gonna do it this way, um, not just with the MK4, but um, just in general, it's always good to uh, to have the fittings on the top here. That way, you know, I mean, gravity can kind of make the oil kind of flow through it, um, or at least get into the cooler. Just because, um, I mean, if they're all upside down the other way, it's uh, you're always working against gravity. Um, you can mount these sideways too. So similar to that. But uh, yeah, and then um, in this application here, um, or in any application really, when you're tight for space, the 90s for sure are a big help just to get that initial curve. But um, yeah, just make sure when you guys do go to mount it, that um, you, know, I mean, you have enough leeway up top to at least get your, your fittings on. You don't wanna make all these holes and welds and everything, and next thing you know, you can't even uh, fit the fittings in. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead here and start uh, drilling and then, um, uh, what do we got here? Kick it around. Just went to Home Depot, picked up uh, just a couple nuts and bolts, um, fresh stuff, you know what I mean? So, yeah, let's get this uh, drilled out here and then we'll mount it up. Alright, guys, so there we go. So, she's all mounted up, as you can see. Um, yeah, it's not too bad for how low it is. I mean,. You know what I mean? It's almost just as low as, actually, honestly, it might even be the same height, if not just a little bit lower than the stock intercooler. But, um, I mean, if I just move um, that, what's it called? If I just move this little bracket here, if I kind of bend it back, honestly, I should be okay. And you know what? It's actually in a better spot than I thought. Um, I mean, just with the grill, so I'll be able to move that grill and move as much air in there as possible. So, um, from the side, uh, you can kind of see there it is right there so it's just a bit of a mess um the lines right now i mean the lines aren't actually connected to anything and those aren't the lines i'm going to be using i'm just having them just so i can uh kind of fab it up and then yeah this little thing this guy right there has got to come out just so i can fit this one a little bit better um just because i'm not sure about how i like that sticking out right there right I remember these things are going to be dealing with pressure and a lot of heat but um yeah this one works out pretty good and then um you know once i get all the wiring kind of sorted out of the way here i should be able to fit the stock horns right here in this location and then as far as the fan wiring goes uh same thing i'll be able to just kind of go up um yeah kind of go up there so but um yeah right now i'm just going to kind of kind of call it a night um, as it's getting nice and dark out But I'll be able to uh, hopefully get back on it tomorrow in the light. So um, yeah All right guys, so we're back here. It's the next day. Um, so you can see better in the light now What we're looking at so there's the oil cooler um, Just have the lines on there and then uh, if you take a look at you can see Our locking washers with our these are three eighths um, three eight threaded uh, just bolts that I used um, so yeah so we're gonna continue on um, yeah the welds aren't that bad they're okay 
I still haven't got any paint yet, but whatever. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to try to be getting off the stock sandwich plate. That's the, that's the goal. And uh, perhaps getting the new one on. Alright, so we almost got this front portion off here of the front end. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the uninstall for it just because if you guys are watching this, excuse me, and you have, um, I mean, if you're just trying to do an oil killer, this is a totally different uh, application to what you might be doing it for. Um, if you do have the MK4, the Golf GTI, um, like I said, there's a lot of tutorials out there that, um, you know I mean, have this to take off the whole kind of rad setup here. But pretty much, basically, um, you know what I mean, for your AC, you have your Allen key bolts. So those will be your hoses. So if you look at the underneath, there's one right here, actually. So there's one right there. And then there's one way at the bottom there. So those go into your actual AC compressor. Um, now make sure you purge your line. So here's a purge right here. Um, I just found like a small, tiny screwdriver that will fit in there. And then that way you can purge all the pressure out because when you try to take off those fittings down there, it is going to shoot everywhere. So as you can see, um, I mean, I didn't do the best job at purging it. There's a bit of a mess, but um, I mean, I'll see if I can kind of wipe it down. Um, yeah, other than that, anyways, uh, as far as the MK4 stuff goes again, you have this connection here at the top that you're going to want to take off. You got four Phillips screws right here that will take off kind of the small cover that goes here um, around the headlight and around the, um, uh, the hood cable here, the hood latch cable. Also, you're going to want to disconnect your rad hoses now. I disconnect, disconnected mine from the actual block. Just be careful, guys, because these are plastic. So that just goes with any really application that you have when you're going to install the, the rad hoses, um, just in general. But um, yeah, make sure the rad is one, that it's completely drained, and two, uh, disconnecting the rad hoses, you want to be careful. Um, you can do it from the rad itself. I just, uh, I don't know, I just like when everything's kind of on the floor, I can get a better, better view of everything. And then you're going to have a bunch of, uh, where'd they go? Here's the T20s. So these are your headlight bolts. So they'll go in one there and one up there and then there'll be the two on top. So that's where your headlight is. And then when you take your headlight off, you can see them there guys, it's just one piece. And then all you have is this connection. So when you take it off, um, like pretty much all the connections on these MK4s, uh, which are, are, some are good, some are really annoying, but you're gonna wanna push down and pull back on that tab and they'll slide off. Um, yeah, after that, you're gonna want to take off your actual bumper. So with your bumper, you just have, you can see these little tiny rusted out T20s. So there's um, six of them in total. You have two on each kind of area here and two in the center. And they'll go onto your frame rail so you can kind of see where the holes were. Um, yeah, and then on to the hood latch support too. So that's another thing I'm probably gonna have to take off. I believe I have to take it off. But um, yeah, and then as far as everything else goes, uh, you're gonna have these green Torx bits. So you can see them here, these guys. So um, I'm missing one, but there's four. There it is right there. So there's four of these. Um, so here's where one location is right here. And then the other one's up top up here, I believe. Um, oh, sorry, right in here. So pretty much that just holds the rest of the bumper on, but also um, is a huge part in playing with um, this actual structural unit here. And then you'll have your two little tiny T20s right up top. Um, after that, like you guys can see, that gets pretty loose. But, you know, I mean, that's just a quick thing for the MK4. Um, you know, I mean, I would go and watch an actual true tutorial on it, but I'm mostly trying to focus on the oil cooler thing. So, yeah, let's try to get this whole thing off here. I'm going to get the condenser off and then um, try to get the rat out. And then I'll be able to get inside with uh, the sandwich plate here. All right, so there we go, guys. So the front's off now. Um, as you can see, we took the intercooler pipe off. I apologize, my neighbor's cutting the grass, which is totally fine. I, they own the house, so 
I don't mind. I just get excited here with everything. But uh, like even here, oh my gosh, my gosh. Like look at that. That's inside my, my intercooler piping. That is nasty, man. So that's why we got this bad boy here. But um, yeah, the front, oh my gosh, look at the front. So this thing is fully apart. We just, um, you know, I mean, I, I really, really didn't want to just crimp these uh, AC lines, but I don't feel like going through all the effort to move all this stuff. Um, and honestly, it's going to be a track car. I've never had a car with AC, really. Even this uh, piece of junk here, this daily driver of mine, she, the AC doesn't work. But um, yeah, anyways, so what we're going to do now, we've already taken the belt off of the AC unit so um, I mean for the MK4 guys again watching um, if you're gonna do the AC delete you're just gonna need a non AC belt it's pretty basic I'm not gonna bother doing a full video on it but uh, yeah so what we're gonna do now is just gonna take the AC condenser out that way I can put the new belt on it's already done good to go um, yeah and then we're gonna start draining the oil again but uh, like look how much room I have right now just to do this like it works out perfectly I can get up up close and personal here i can do my bypass with these lines here so um although it's not necessary to do but sometimes guys going the extra distance pays off also guys for um the belt just before i forget so there is the part number um like i said i got this from das parts in cambridge i use them for pretty much all my volkswagen stuff but if you have to order it or anything those are the part numbers and um, this is pretty much for a 1.8 turbo with um, no AC, so just a non-AC belt. And you can see, like, it fits perfectly. Um, I figured I'd just show you guys that quickly before I move on here. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we're just draining out the coolant. So um, for these Mark IVs, the coolant runs in and out of the sandwich plate here, the stock one. That's how they kind of cool the oil. But obviously our our party's gonna be a different situation. But um, yeah, so I'm just laying the strain right now. And then you can see inside the oil filter there, or the sandwich plate, sorry. Um, so you have your adapter fitting. So the adapter fitting that I got from Mishimoto is what we're gonna be using um, for that. So uh, yeah, I'm just waiting. As you can see, it's kinda slowed down a bit. So I'm gonna get these lines off. Hopefully I have a big enough socket for that. That might be like a 22 mil. But um, yeah, let's work on getting this bad boy off right now. All right, so we have a one and one eighth size wrench here, which seems to be the size to get this uh, adapter fitting off. But like, holy cow, that's a pretty big wrench. Um, I don't like doing it like this, that's for sure. Just because there's such little contact there. But um, I don't have a bigger socket to fit it. I know it's a bit of a mess here, but... Um, yeah, so I don't know, guys, if you guys can find an inch and one eighth uh, socket or something even bigger than that. But even my 22 won't fit, um, at least for the stock one. I'm not sure what the new adapter size is, if it's a little bit smaller. But yeah, so pretty much you're going to want to um, have to do this while well, holding the camera. But so just put it around here. There we go. So you can see the ring coming off now. Still some cooling coming out. Some oil. Just be careful you don't drop it into your uh, bucket of oil here. At the same time, you want to keep it there while you're draining. And then this should slide right off, like so. As you see, it's going to leak a bit more. And here she comes. So there's the stock sandwich plate. Oh, I just spilled it everywhere. <laughs> it's okay. But um, yeah, so there's a stock sandwich plate right there. I'm gonna grab the new one to show you guys and then hopefully I can get this adapter to work. So let's take a look at our uh, sandwich plate. So uh, Mishimoto is the brand, obviously. I was just telling you guys the other day. So here it is right here. Looks so good. Um, yeah, I gotta see how it's gonna fit. So obviously go up. Um, and it looks like I'm definitely gonna have to put my own um, What's it called? I'm gonna have to get this this bad boy out somehow 
Uh, I do not know how, but I'm gonna find a way. Obviously, it threads in. And then um, I gotta keep in mind too, like when I'm doing this and when you guys do it, um, remember to clock it. You're gonna have to clock it a certain way. That way it fits, and that way it. Um, you know, I mean, in this situation, like my lines are over there, so like I'm gonna be running straight fittings out of here. So like I want to have it something similar to like that. If I have a couple bends in the lines, you know, what I mean, they're gonna be braided, so um, they'll still be strong enough. But at the same time, too, this is where my oil pressure gauge is gonna go. So you get two on each side here, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to work on getting uh, this thread out and then putting in this bad boy right here. So um, yeah, I'm gonna see how this all works out and uh, yeah, make it work. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how this is actually gonna work here um, because this doesn't fit. Like obviously like the Mishimoto one, like it's obviously way too short um there's no long adapter to, to like you know what i mean and like i don't know if i'm actually supposed to take this out um just looking at some of them on the ecs uh tuning site um they don't come with any long adapters at all so um like i really don't want to mess around with this because i'm gonna have to buy this whole setup so um it does work like if i put the stock one back on so something like that and then I stick the second one underneath and then it does thread like it will lock at the bottom when I use that small adapter fitting this guy right there but I just don't know because that kind of defeats somewhat of the purpose um, like it could work obviously with you know when I mean, you have an o-ring at the top o-ring in the center and then an o-ring for your oil filter um, See, I'm not sure. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do right now is just, uh, I think I'm gonna try and just kind of tighten this up right now. I'm not gonna finish this tonight, obviously, but um, at least I kind of get an ideal for it. And then um, I think tomorrow I'll just probably just call ECS Tuning and just kind of ask them, like, do I, do I use the stock sandwich plate still? Or do I cap it off? Or what do I do? Because if worse comes to worse, I can still run coolant through there. And it'll still, I guess, act as a double cooler, but um, I don't know. To me, it just kind of seems like a little bit off. But um, yeah, for now, I'll just kind of do this. Uh, clock it the way I need to clock it. So something like that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how it works, I guess. All right, guys, so it's the morning here. Um, yeah, there's our setup right now. So I was doing some reading last night, and I guess um, a fair bit of people have actually mounted the sandwich plate um, underneath the stock heat exchanger here or oil cooler um, yeah I guess the coolant um, helps the car like helps the oil get up to operating temperature a lot a lot quicker so um, the only other people I've heard of really that that uh, did it the other way I guess they did a like a full um, I mean you'd have to get a different threaded rod and take it off the stock um, oil pump there but uh, yeah, I guess whatever, if this is the way it's gonna work. Um, I just have everything kind of loose fit right now. Um, just cause I have to put some oil on the O-rings like you would with an oil filter. But uh, yeah, so I think we're just gonna kind of leave it like this. I'm gonna put it that way and then I'm gonna take that loop off and I'm going to run just brand new 5 8 heater hose just to kind of make the same sort of setup that was on there before. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, I guess, so. Um, in the meantime, yeah, I mean, let's see if I can get this stuff off. I'd like to get the rad support, everything kind of somewhat back on today. Um, I'm going to try to take the rad off soon, shortly, in the AC condenser. And then um, at least that way if I get this thing mounted up top here, at least I can kind of just um, kind of route my, my AN lines for the actual cooler. Uh, the goal today, um, I don't have much much time to work on today but the goal today is just to kind of at least get oil back in the car so now you can see so I still gotta do this line but um, at least now there's no kinks in the actual heating hose here um, yep I just put a little bit of oil on all the o-rings just some uh, you know, basic stuff nothing too crazy um, so yeah I'm gonna get this other line going on here at the same time I'm gonna grab the fittings so these are your m20 Two dash ten AN fittings. So, 
Um, it does have an O-ring on it, so I don't know if I actually have to put any pipe dope on these things. But, um, I'm gonna have to do some research on that, but like, pretty basic guys. It's gonna thread in like so, when I can get my hand on it good here. So I'll just kind of get started, but yeah, you know what I mean? And then obviously I'll have, here's my end fitting. I still have to take off and put on the other line. And I'll run there and then kind of, kind of over top. So underneath the rad support and uh, kind of in between on the frame to the cooler. But yeah, it's starting to come together here. So what I'm going to do now is um, take off uh, the fittings off these junk Amazon lines. So um, yeah, it's got two adjustables. I'm going to put some tape on these, that way I don't ruin them. They're already ruined from the previous owner, but that's nice. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put half of it in the vise and the other half not, and then I should be able to un uh, unscrew them. So um, yeah, let's bring them into the garage. And kind of get it set up here. See here already, guys? As I rotate it, so the line's moving, but the actual um, collar itself isn't. You can kind of see the gap starting to come. So every fitting is different. Um, these are just some cheap Amazon ones, but I got them for a good deal. Why not? Um, but yeah, I mean, take your time with them. It uh, takes some patience. If you have a vice, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys that part right there. We have all our fittings out, or at least, um, I mean, off the hose. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we got our new Vibrant Race Hose. Um, so those that are going to watch my catch can set up, same, um, same hose, just different color, but, um, uh, yeah, so this stuff works really well, dash 10, uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to put, um, the first hose, or the first fitting on, and then, um, I'll measure it out, cut, and that way I'll have my first, my first line. So here's our first one there, guys, um, big pain in the ass to put these things on, but honestly, it's just so much easier when they are done. But um, yeah, I just gotta take the hockey tape off, um, and then I'm gonna put it on one of these, uh, one of these what's it called here, one of these uh, fittings, and then uh, yeah, we'll start routing. Still have the full five feet, and um, yeah, we'll be able to just kind of measure it out and see what we need. Okay, so we're just gonna mount this. Or we're gonna thread this one on over here. So I'll thread it on. They have to sit almost perfectly. Um, I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm not going to tighten everything just because I'm gonna have to obviously take the line off again. So what I'm kind of hoping here is, I mean, I'll get this wiring out of the way. The horns are gonna be hopefully right here. But uh, yeah, we'll have a nice kind of curl to go underneath. So get these wires out of the way. There we go. Just a nice easy curve and then in the um, underneath um, the rat support here and then it'll come out right there now I'm gonna try to keep it as close to the battery as I can uh, that's my headlight wiring right there that way the rad will sit in and what I'm gonna also do is try to leave myself enough um, enough space or enough slack so that if I do, when I do put the rad in, I got some movement here, right? So, um, yeah, you can see there. So I'm gonna be making my cut and then we'll have, um, yeah, we'll have that piece already done. And then uh, on to the next one. Uh, there's the first line in. As you can see, nice and tight now. Tucks in, uh, you know what I mean? Like I said, leave some slack. That way when, um, I mean, this shroud's gonna go up higher anyways. But um, yeah, we got the 90 on. Um, I really hope they don't leak. Oh, please don't leak. So I had to go out and buy some more Dash 10 line. And um, you know what? I just kind of sucked it up. I know it's not gonna match, but really I don't really care as long as it moves the oil. So we got some Dash 10 uh, stainless steel braided. Yeah, guys, so here we go. So you can see it. So I'm just gonna, um, yeah, take off the oil filter and grab my 27 mil 
and tighten up the, the locking nut. And then what we're gonna do, once everything's all like nice and tight, um, and everything's all set the way that we want it, we're gonna remove these lines again, and then we are gonna pre-fill, um, just like you would with an oil filter, we're gonna pre-fill the, um, the, what's called the oil cooler. That way there's no air in the system whatsoever, or at least we can minimize as much air as possible in there. Um, just goes a long way um, you know what I mean to uh, to fill it up to prime everything up that way we have full pressure and no air pockets in our system when we start so um, yeah oil filters off here and then so 27 mil um, I can only find it in a half inch drive unfortunately but that's okay we're not gonna over tighten anything so this is just a Johnson bar nice if I had a legit uh, torque wrench right now but that's okay Everything's sitting there nice. So we have fresh um, liquid Molly 5W40 oil. Um, just for, uh, you know, this is pretty good stuff for the Volkswagen. Obviously your application might be different, but that's what we're using today. So get nice and snug here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this nice small funnel here, small little tip on it, and then I'm gonna take off these lines. Everything's maxed out the way it's gonna be. Now it's gonna sit, and then I'm going to, uh, yeah, just kind of fill the whole cooler up. So this is my first time doing it, but I'm assuming what I'm gonna do is just kind of fill up the one, and when the other one starts leaking out, or at least I'm topped up, then I'll know uh, we're full. Get yourself a set of these AN wrenches. Especially if you're doing AN fittings, it helps so much. I usually say it in whatever video I've used them with, but yeah, it definitely helps a lot. Alright guys, so there we go. So everything's all filled up now. Um, yeah, this is all nice and tight. Uh, you know what I mean? The lines are on there. The the cooler's all uh, primed up as well as the oil filters. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I'm gonna end the video on this note right now. Um, you know, what I mean, I'll probably do all the wiring a different day. I just really don't have the time for it right now. But um, yeah, I'll make sure I'll get a video of that. So there you go, guys. Mishimoto. Um, yeah, sandwich plate with some fittings, some line. Um, I mean, I'll put all the parts in the description below. So, um, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm happy that this is done, at least for now. We'll see how it works on the track. It's a bit of a hybrid setup, I guess you can say. It's not really your traditional oil uh, cooler where it sits, but um, yeah, we'll see how it works. So anyways, don't be afraid to um, leave a comment, guys, or subscribe, or if you have any tips or advice, uh, I'm always willing to learn more. So. Um, yeah, if not, um, check us out at Max Attack Motorsports on Instagram and uh, stay tuned for more uh, Time Attack build stuff with uh, the GTI.